Lucy. Uh, hello, my name's Lucy Neal. I'm with the Nulhegan tribe of the Abenaki people out here in the Northeast Kingdom of Vermont. Um, I'm also the Title VII Indian Education Coordinator for our tribe. And twice a year, we work with, in conjunction with the Old Stone House, and we uh, do program for local elementary school children and various community uh, uh, activities. Uh, today, uh, we had several schools here in Orleans County. We had a school from St. Johnsbury, Vermont. Um, we also had a group of seniors from the meeting place in Newport, Vermont, and we did half-hour presentations of our culture uh, with these uh, participants, um, and that uh, incorporated learning uh, what life was like before uh, European contact, and then how life changed with European contact, and Native Americans today. We also did uh, some uh, activities, we did some games, um, and uh, provided like a 30-minute program uh, for, uh, for the community, for our community children. And this will enable our, our children to learn our culture and to pass it on and to keep our culture going. Five minutes, okay. Next one over. Next one. Gold. Okay, right here. Okay, so then when we hand out the drumsticks, we hand them out the same way. Gail, come on in. So the first, so when we start a song, Gail's the drum leader, so you guys are going to follow her, okay? So when she starts, you don't start until she gives you the look. Okay, what song do you want to do first? You went higher? Okay. Wigwams, right there. Yes? In a little while. We might. We hopefully we will. 
Okay, and those were covered with, I said those are covered with bark, you can see, birch bark. Birch bark, of course, you all know what a birch tree is, right? Okay, with the white bark on it. Well, birch bark is very wonderful. It's very, very useful. And birch bark, on the outside, we see this, right? We see white. But on the other side, this was rolled off of a tree that had been cut down. This is the part that's up against the wood, and it's very strong and it's waterproof. So I'm going to pass this for you. I'm kind of breaking it half. It's fine because a lot of boys and girls have seen it. So this is what was used on the outside of um, and used for many, many other things. It could be folded into different containers to put things in. And let's see. It could be used for. This is, this is birch bark right here. And you can make it out of a telescope. What do you think this is? Horn? Megaphone? Yeah, it so looks like a megaphone, doesn't it? <laughs> it is a horn, but it's used to call in moose for moose hunting. So you can shoot it. Do it. Right, so I'm not very good at this. I'm going to ask Roland. Mm. You were a moose when you come out and see what that was? Right. I wouldn't. I would say it's You wouldn't? Okay. I don't blame you. This one, this one is adapted. There are several countries that also do this, but we also did this. This is called a bull roar. And it was, it was the loudest how, how you could make your sound. So I'm going to give this a whirl. Sometimes I can do this, sometimes I can't. You're going to get wound up now. <laughs> version of it. This is called a hoop and stick game and that's what it is, a hoop and a stick. And what you do is you try to flip whoa, that was what? the hoop onto the stick and it helps people be uh, boys and girls to be better at aiming. So who like to who'd like to try this? I think you had your hand up first. Come over here. Okay. See if you can do it. <laughs> one more, no, go ahead, try again. One more time. Be a little more gentle. Oh, almost, one more time. Okay. Ah. One more, and then we'll go on to another game that's fun to play. I want to try. Oh, that was close. Oh, oh. one more. Oh, oh, so close. I want to try. We have other things to show you. <laughs> Yes, yeah, of course. You would eat a rabbit. A chicken. There were no chickens, but we had grouse, right? Partridge. Squirrels. You could eat squirrels. What about quack, quack, quack? You could eat duck. 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 Look at goose. Fish. Fishing. Yes. Fishing. And, uh, That's right. Mountain lions. Right. So, besides you, many of the the animals were used for, as I said, eating. But all parts of the animal were used for different. So it's very little waste. So we're going to show you some things that were used or made from different parts of the animals. Yes. Is it on the skin used for beds and clothes? Yes, it is. Bedding and clothing and the outside of shelters. Yes. Can I something? Yes. So um, I was living at my old old house, and so my dad said it was chicken, but it was actually rabbit, and so. Oh, you mean for supper? 
Did it taste like chicken though? Yeah. Yeah. It was actually rabbit. Oh, he told me. When I ate it all, my, my dad was like, that was rabbit. I'm like, ew. Oh, but it tasted good while you're eating it, right? He tried to check it. Yeah, you'd get used to it. So, different things from the animals. Bones were used for many, many different things. Oh, bless you. Gislin height. And this ball, this is a rattle. There are other rattles too, right? that is made from a leg bone. And then on this part of it, these are the toes of deer. And Roland has deer toes on his as well. And I could pass that around so you could shake is, it once or twice. These are knuckle bones <coughs> from feet. And this is some sort of a seed, I'm not sure. You're a nail, right? I can't use that. What might we use this for? Calling in deer, like if you had two, you could just like scratch it together with like the yeah. deer like scratching. Because what else would we use for? Uh, oh yeah. Very well. What would we use it for? Weapons. Weapons. Oh, I bet you could really hurt somebody with one of these, huh? Sure. 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 What else? Yeah. You could make make you make knives out of these. But just like this, and other uses. You could use it to break up the soil so that we can plant our garden. Right. And native uh, Abenaki people had a special way of gardening, didn't they? They yeah, just called. Does anyone know what we're talking about? You know, you could also use that for a rake. Right, I know. Did anyone ever hear of the three sisters? No. Oh, it's a very special way that um, three different crops were planted in a garden, and they worked together to grow together. And they were corn, beans, and squash. Three different things, the three sisters. The corn would grow tall. The beans would wrap their way up the corn to keep it, to keep it growing. And the squash would be low to the ground, and it would keep shade so there wouldn't be weeds growing, and it would keep the soil moist. So that's the three sisters. <coughs> so you're going to hear that again someday. Here's another thing made out of bone. Here's a comb made from bone. Uh, yes? What are you doing with those? You'll see later. Yeah, you'll see. Here's some deer hide. This is what was used for clothing. Can you pass this? It's very soft and very nice to touch. Part of what we do is we do storytelling. And we have stories that we tell that how things came to be. <coughs> so the story that you're going to hear is how our calendar came to be. Okay? The Abenaki calendar is a little different from the calendar that we're used to. How many months are there in the year? Eleven. Oh. Yes? Eleven. At twelve. Twelve, right, <laughs> right. And how many days are there in a month? 40, around 30, sometimes 30, 28. Yeah. 30 okay. or 31. Well, our calendar came from Turtle. Turtle taught us about her shell. But turtle can't talk. Turtle's shell has 13 sections on the top. Now, there's just so happens to be 13 moons, full moons, when we say moons, we mean full moons, on Turtle's back. We just had a full moon this, uh, this weekend, yeah. a beautiful full moon. Abenaki people count their months by moons. So Turtle taught us that there are 13. And every single time you see a turtle shell, there are, here's another one, 13 sections on Turtle's back. Isn't that cool? I can't see it. No, it's hard to see on this one. And around the edge, see the little tiny ones around the edge? There are always 28 of those. And in between each full moon, there are 28 days. So that's what Turtle taught us, and it came to be that we have our months as 28 days, 13 months. This is a rattle. And this is a 
pouch to hang around your neck. That's a turtle. <coughs> so once again, we're using the animal for something. And no matter how small or how big the turtle is, you always have those 13 big ones and 28 little ones. And each, each moon represents something different to us. Like we had the planting moon, we had the strawberry moon, and some of the other The hunting moon, the hunting moon, the harvesting moon. The harvesting moon. Each moon tells us something different. The frost moon. There's a making ice moon. Mm -hmm. Right, so the moons have to do with different things that happen that Mother Earth show us. Call. Used by hunters. Oh, I call in a moose. And we're going to put Roland on the spot again and ask him to do his invitation. Okay, you guys look for moose, okay? It's the only they could come running why. around the building at any moment when he goes. It's the only reason why she really strong. So I can do the moose call. <laughs> Some of them were burnt out. Some of them were burnt, burnt out. out canoes, big logs, and they burnt them out so that uh, people could sit in them and use them as a canoe. And this one, Michael made the other day, and this is a birch bark canoe. Now, when I was a little girl, I'm gonna, we'll close with a story, a, a real one. When I was a little girl, I grew up in, in Newport Center, Vermont. My grandfather was Abnaki, and he used to come and get me to pick gooseberries. What I remember about gooseberries was that they were round and they had a little thorn on the end of them. I didn't particularly care for them that much. <laughs> but every time he'd come and get me, okay, he, I would never have a container. I think subconsciously I did it on purpose <laughs> because he would go and talk to the tree and I thought that was weird. And then he would cut out this piece of birch bark and he'd make me a canoe. It was similar to this, but a little bit bigger and a little bit wider, okay? And he would sew it together, and that was my container to get my gooseberries, okay? So when I grew up, I always knew I was native because we did things that were different than everybody else. Like my Pepe would make me a canoe, okay? My Meme would take a a uh, chicken wing or a uh, turkey wing, and she clean out the wood stove. That wood stove is in my house now. I own that stove. But she would clean out the ash pan and everything else with, with the feathers. It was like your dust pan, okay? And she could get in the corners with it. My grandmother was the best chicken plucker you ever saw in your life. That woman could sit on the porch, and she could just do that. This is a feather fan, and if you can, we use it for ceremony anymore, but then they would just get right in there and she'd clean it all out. So it's like a strong, strong. So think back in your history, ask your parents, ask your grandparents what they remember, because what they remember is very, very important today. I was a lucky girl. I was able to know my great grandparents. When they were very, very old, I was in high school so I was able to take care of them. So I'm translating now a cookbook that belonged to my great-grandmother. My sister is very fluent in French. I'm not so much. And it was written in French in a composition book. And in the composition book, everything is either low heat, medium heat, or high heat. There were recipes in there for cleaning solutions to clean in your house with vinegar and a few other things. There was even in there a solution, a mixture, to clean your floors and to make varnish, to varnish your floors. So when we started translating the cookbook, my sister had a hard time with small, medium, 
or high heat. And I said, you have to remember it was a wood stove. And she was born in the late 1800s. So it was a wood stove heat, okay? So this has been a fun project to do. And she was a pretty unique lady, had 10 kids. And, uh, oh yeah. So uh, that, was <coughs> that was typical of big families because you needed the kids to work the farmland, okay? Now my ancestors came down on my dad's side. They came down to North Troy, Troy, Westfield, Vermont, and they came. Back then, the land was cheaper to purchase here, but they, when they came, it was teach to people how to make maple syrup. They came as sugar makers, and they came to teach the people, and then they wound up staying here. So that was, that was like my history. But it's fun to look at your history and to see where you came from, okay? So anyway, on that note, it was fun. I hope you guys had a really good time. Okay, we are available, so give us a call. And you guys are from where? Shepherd. Shepherd. St. John's Berry. This is a, um, a moose calling. <laughs> it's made from birch bark as well, and the ends of it are spruce root. And um, this is a little bit right here. My bark was splitting, so I put a little bit of um, spruce sap on there. That was used for sort of like glue. Why don't you blow it and see if we can see any moose? We're going to let Roland do that. Thank <laughs> <laughs> right, you. That's, that's a good idea. Here comes one. <laughs> we've been waiting for we were waiting for this great an addle addle, which um, was used even earlier than bow and arrow. So I'll get I'll get this. Usually back prehistoric times, ten thousand years ago. We hunted with bow, but we also hunted with atlatls. And we hunted as a group. So it was like six to 10 to 12 hunters to kill a moose, a mammoth, or whatever that was there at that time period. So. Do you throw that at them? I'm going to show you. Yeah. I'm going that way. So this is an atlatl. This one here is not my favorite. This one, you have a notch. That the, your tip goes in right here, right? and then you hang on to it with your fingers. Okay, so you're going to do it like you do a bow. Okay, so you're going to aim. All right. Now you want it to go in an arch kind of a thing to come down on your on your animal. So anyway, I'm going to point, bring it right up to my ear. Oh, okay. I did it again. I think the wind helps. Yeah. Or not. <laughs> Okay. Wow, so this we, know, one, we know you're strong. <laughs> so this one is a six foot lance. Yeah. And this one, this atlatl, you can hold it like this. Okay. okay. So it's got a thing. I like this one. Yeah. Okay. So let's see how well I can do with this one. Yeah. All right. Okay. I do better with this one. Yeah. That, but that's, that's how they were hunting parts. on the end of them. Throw. Yes, there's yeah, a spear point usually on the end of them. Yeah. Okay. These don't have spear points. These don't have. So you can see how it would take five or six, five or six of those to kill an animal. Into a, oh, yeah. a, a mammoth. Okay. Something large. Especially a moose. Talk about wampum. Have any of you ever heard of wampum? Money? Yes. Money? Yeah. Yes. It was just as money. Yes. It was money. Yes. It was just as currency. Yes. Okay. Okay, money. Here. Okay. Wampum's made from a shell. Okay comes from the coast, down in Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island. It's a type of clam, it's called quahog. Right, exactly. Like a big clam. Wow. And the shells have all different shades of purples and whites. Yeah. And they shape them into beads. Oh, wow. Okay. Cool. So these are real <coughs> wampum beads. Okay, cool. These beads were used as currency, but they were also used to make belts for communicating. Okay. Cool. Um, sometimes belts were made to honor treaties. Uh, belts were also made with 
we had births. It was a belt. Each tribe had a belt that they would use when somebody was born. Oh my gosh, I didn't know that. And they would have them for marriages. Naming. Yeah. They would have them for naming ceremonies. Okay. Even when somebody crossed over, there was a belt that was used for that. Okay. Now, can you imagine making those beads without power tools? Yeah. <gasps> now, one of the first means of communication between two groups that didn't share the same language and couldn't really understand each other. Say somebody came into our territory and we didn't understand their language. We had a universal wampum belt that everybody knew what it meant. And we would, the chief usually carries this belt and they would have a runner. The chief would give the runner the belt. He would give it to him just like this. He would then take this belt and go over to the other tribe and he would hand it to their chief just like this. Now the chief's going to pick it up, and he looks at it. What does he see? Yeah. Some of you have smoked one of these. Uh, is it a joke? Uh, no. A peace yeah, yeah. pipe. Peace pipe. Peace pipe. Okay. I'm I say she said it. I did 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 it. But, now he would look at it and he would see it this way. And he would see the beast <laughs> pipe. Me if I did it. <laughs> and then he'd turn it like this and he'd look at it. Oh, yeah. Now, what do you think he's seeing here? Nah, I see. out of Tomahawk? <laughs> Tomahawk, yes. So then he would think, do I want to go to war? Right. Now, the way he sent the message back was how he handed this back to the runner. If he handed this belt back like this to the runner, yeah. then the runner would take it back to the chief, his chief, yeah. and that chief would think they want to talk peace. We're going to have a feast tonight. But if it came back like this, yeah. then the chief war. knew we're going to war. war we fight. have to prepare for war in the morning. Fight. Yeah. So this was called the War and Peace Belt. Cool. There are many different designs to it, but the one standard is always going to be the pipe and tomahawk. Yes. That is so that told everybody what their intentions were when they met. So the wampum was used for many different things. We still use it today. Are they made any bigger? The belts? Yeah. Oh, yes. Belts have been made from smaller than this size yeah. I mean, to like, six and eight feet long. <laughs> like you could wear them if you wanted to wear them. You could wear them, but they weren't often worn because they were made with the, the, womp, the real wampum beads. And they were very expensive to buy those beads today. Right. Each bead is six dollars a piece. Oh. So, yes. That's a lot of so, if you're talking a belt that's got two or three thousand beads in it, yeah. each one of those is six dollars a piece. Because of the labor involved to make them, it's, it takes a lot of work to make those beads. That's about fifteen thousand dollars. Yeah. At least. Yep. Yeah. So today, most of the time, unless we're actually doing like a treaty belt, we use what's called simulated beads, and that's what this belt. Is.